Yes. Um, so your question is, what is BIA? A L C L, and it is a real mouthful, Madalena. But what it stands for is um, Breast Implant Associated Anaplastic Large Cell Lymphoma. So you can see why we use the abbreviation because it really is a mouthful. But the short answer is that it is not breast cancer. It is a cancer of the white cells, the lymph cells. And I think since COVID, everybody's become much more familiar with white cells and how important they are in helping to maintain your immune system and your health. So it is a cancer that occurs in the breast, but it is not a breast cancer. So the signs and risk factors for getting BIA, ALCL. Well, first of all, we'll go to the risk factors because this is important. So the risk factor is that you have a breast implant. That's why it's called breast implant associated ALCL. So you have a breast implant and those breast implants will be put in for cosmetic reasons or they might be put in for breast reconstruction after a woman's had her breast removed because of breast cancer and remembering this is not breast cancer itself so the risk factor is having a breast implant we don't understand why women develop bia -A -L -C -L. we think it's something to do with the surface of the breast implant irritating the surrounding tissue. Um, the irritation is probably the best way of putting it, may create what is called an inflammatory response, which stimulates a woman's immune system to produce lots of white blood cells which then go to the area around the implant. And we think this is what causes the problem, because as I said to you, this is a cancer of the lymph cells. So we think all the lymph cells go to this part of the body because the implant is irritating the breast tissue. In particular, the implant is irritating the capsule, which is the scar tissue, that forms around an implant. So any woman who has an implant put into her breast will form this capsule because it's how the body protects you from the implant because an implant is a foreign body. It is foreign material to your body. And this is how your breast protects you by forming this capsule. And in most women, this capsule is very soft. It's a little bit like a silk handkerchief that's just encircling the um, implant but we think that the white cells gather in that space between the capsule and the implant and this is where the cancer happens so those are the risk factors the signs are the fact that this cancer produces either a lump but more commonly in the earlier stage it produces lots of fluid so you get fluid around the implant and that means the breast increases in size and it's not subtle. The breast can double or quadruple in size. And I do very much remember the first time I saw this when a lady said to me, my breast has doubled in size. And I was thinking, gosh, how can that happen? And when I looked at her, it was really obvious. So it's not a subtle sign. So the two most common signs are the fact that your breast increases in size and that's because of the fluid around the implant or because all these white cells cluster into a lump and you feel a breast lump. So I think any sensible woman who noticed these changes would go and see her doctor straight away. Um, it can also cause something called capsulitis 
or capsule thickening. And this is where that fine silk-like um, scar tissue around the implant becomes thickened because it's angry and it becomes thickened. And sometimes it can become two or three centimeters thick and it becomes painful and tight around the implant. And it tends to therefore cause distortion in the appearance of the breast and pain because it's this very tight, thick layer of capsule formation, but it's more commonly the lump or the fluid or a, bone or a combination of the two. Yes, um, that's a very good question, Madeleine. How do you diagnose um, B-I-A-A-L-C-L? -L? Well, first of all, you have to be alert to the possibility of the diagnosis. And that's really important for any doctors, nurses, other healthcare professionals who are dealing with women who have breast implants. Because this disease is still not... Um, commonly known about. And so if you ever see a woman with a breast implant who has breast problems, you always just have to keep the thought tucked at the back of your mind, could this be BIA ALCL? As I say, generally it's very obvious in the early stages because of the extreme swelling or the lump. In most women, um, what you do is you suck out the fluid around the implant and you send it to the laboratory and they can tell you the diagnosis just looking under a microscope at the fluid. But sometimes you can biopsy the lump and that also gives you the diagnosis. Those are the two most common ways of making the diagnosis. Once you've made the diagnosis, then you might want to do other more complicated tests such as breast MRI and whole body scanning with PET CT scans. But generally, right at the beginning, it's all the simple tests that you'd normally do for any woman with a breast worry or problem. Mammogram, ultrasound, take away the fluid, or biopsy the lump and get it analyzed in the laboratory. Yes, another very good question, Madalena. And we don't entirely know how quickly BIA ALCL spreads because there are very few women around the world who have this condition. Um, I'm talking from the UK, and in the UK, we think there are about 80 women who have had this condition. Around the world, there are reports of between six or 800 women who've had this condition. So we don't know how quickly it spreads, but we think that on the whole, it's a very slow growing disease because most of the women that we are seeing are presenting with very early disease. And I think that's because they produce this fluid and it makes the breast increase in size. And most women think, gosh, what's happened to my breast? And they go and see a doctor. Um, so they get diagnosed very early. So we don't have many women who we have um, seen at the late stages of this disease, which is good because obviously when you diagnose cancer late, it's extremely difficult to treat. So you want to pick up cancer early. Um, so I'm sorry, I can't completely answer that question for you, but we think the spread is slow um, and most women are diagnosed with very early disease when it's highly curable. Yes, so how do we treat BIAALCL? Well, generally, the treatment is surgical. So if the cancer is early, we remove the implant and we remove this capsule all the way around the implant. If the disease is more advanced, then you might have to do more radical surgery. You might have to remove more of the breast, for example. And if the disease is very advanced, then you might need chemotherapy, drug treatment. But that's very unusual. Most women present with early disease, and so the treatment is removal of the implant 
and removal of the capsule, this scar tissue around the implant. Now, when I say that, Madalena, that makes it sound very easy. Removal of the implant is very easy, but removal of the capsule is technically very difficult because you have to detach the capsule with any cancer from the surrounding tissue. And so, of course, that causes a lot of trauma to the surrounding tissue. It can cause bleeding, fluid collections, and some of that capsule is actually on the chest wall. That's called the posterior capsule. It lies behind the implant on the rib cage, and you have to peel it off the muscles and the rib cage. And that's an unpleasant thing to do because it's very destructive. It causes a lot of bleeding. It can damage the underlying lungs. And it's very painful for women. So you have to be a technically skilled expert surgeon at doing this to help minimize those complications for women so that they don't wake up in pain and that they can make a fast recovery. So the surgery can be um, quite challenging for patient and for surgeon. And of course, once you've removed the implant and you've removed the capsule, then it changes the shape of the breast completely. Um, and if a woman has had implants put in for cosmetic reasons, she may um, want a plastic surgeon to be involved in reshaping the breast so that she keeps a breast shape. Um, a woman who's had an implant inserted for reconstruction after a breast cancer um, may want to have a different type of breast reconstruction. For example, using her own tissue from somewhere else in the body, because understandably, she will not want another implant. There are a couple of women who have requested implants to be reinserted after this. And I have to be honest, that does make us as surgeons nervous because we don't fully understand why implants cause this cancer. As I said, it may be because of the interaction between the surface of the implant and the capsule. And so what we're doing is we're now using completely smooth implants. They have a glass-like surface and we think that glass-like surface doesn't have the same interaction with the breast tissue that some of the rougher more textured implants do. So some women have elected to have these smooth implants put back in and these are pioneer patients Madalena. We are watching what happens to them. They are brave women um, because they are pioneer patients. But so far, so good. <laughs> Absolutely. The majority of women with ALCL have early ALCL and the surgery cures them. In fact, very few women have died from this condition. As I said, I, I'm more familiar with the UK data rather than the worldwide data. But in the UK, the number of women that have died from this condition has been very small indeed. And possibly only one or two women out of the 80 that were diagnosed. So it's usually an early disease that's effectively treated with surgery no further treatments required and the woman is cured. So I think the message to all women is if you have implants, be aware of this condition. You don't have to have your implants removed to prevent it, just be aware of it. And like any woman, if you get a change in your breast, go and see your doctor or your nurse and get it checked out like you do for any other breast problem.